Hi, my name is Austin Kunis, and today we're going to be talking about Robert Wilson. So this man here is Robert Wilson. He's an American artist from Texas. And what exactly is he known for? Well, he's known as being an experimental theater director, a visual artist, and the founder of the Watermill Center, which is a self-proclaimed laboratory for performance. It's based in Long Island in New York. They basically just create wild, samey, insane art. So what exactly does his work look like? Well, the following slide is one of my all-time favorite production photos of his. This is from a production he did called The Old Woman. Uh, the man on the left is actually the actor Willem Dafoe, who some of you may be familiar with. And as you can see here, his work has a very bold design. You can see more in that here in this series of production photos. Uh, these are from two productions. One's Einstein on the Beach, which is probably his most famous work, and the other from a piece called Shakespeare's Sonnets. As you can see, they all have this very strong, almost geometric and two-dimensional sense to them, with also having a very defined color palette. So what I want to talk about more is in this production of a piece he did called Hamlet Machine. And it's not about the people, it's not about the color palette, it's not even really about the production itself. What I want to talk about is this, the table. To many, you probably didn't focus on this table at first, and... People normally don't really focus on this set. You know, I used to be a set designer. If people never said anything about our work, you know, that means we did a good job. But what if we change the way we look at this set piece? What if we take that table and we put it in a gallery setting? Or what if we go even further and isolate just that one chair? As Robert Wilson says, in theater, a chair can give its own presence on stage, equal to that of light, sound, or the gesture of the actor. Now, this is a pretty bold statement, and a lot of it's driven by this approach of his. I never thought the theater design as decoration, but as something architectural. So reading this, I know that Wilson's creating these art pieces as being multifunctional. He's not limiting to them to being just a place for an actor to sit. He's creating a function of a chair. What role does it play both on and off stage? Another good example of this is from a production of Madame Butterfly that he did. In the back, you could see a young boy on a stool, and it just seems to be kind of a background piece. But when we isolate it, all of a sudden it looks like a sculpture that you would see in an art gallery, you know, defined lines, shapes, and colors. The way we view it off stage in this gallery, like photograph setting, is completely different than the way we viewed it on stage. He also does this with different pieces of work as well. It's not limited to chairs. Um, this is a drop from a production he did called Letters to Queen Victoria. And as you can see here, this is a gallery installation this past September of the drop. And at this point, the drop is probably nearly 30 to 40 years old. So there's a both multifunctional in how it's displayed and multifunctional in a historical aspect. Now I'm also really interested too in his social media posts, you know? This is a little letter that he wrote to Lady Gaga congratulating her for winning an Academy Award. And the way he focuses the lines and the composition of the text, it changes from a just post into a visual piece of art. So I found this quote that I love. Art, object, interior, furniture should stretch beyond its functionality, beyond its prime purpose. When I read this, I was like, yes, this is what Robert Wilson's trying to do. But then I realized this quote came from a furniture website. I thought it was from an art blog. It came from a furniture website, and I thought the furniture was pretty ugly. I know that's just my opinion, but I thought it wasn't ugly. I thought it was ugly. My bad. I thought it was very ugly. But it led me to these questions. Art can become furniture, but can furniture become art? We know Robert Wilson is creating these pieces, and it's easily translated into furniture. But for a furniture manufacturer, could it translate into art? How do we separate genuine artistic intention from a marketing tactic? Wilson is creating his works from a basis of artistic passion, whereas his furniture company, and their object is to sell a product. Can we separate the two? And is primary functionality a factor in determining if something is art? Wilson's pieces begin as art and then they end as art, whereas with the furniture company, it primarily starts as a piece of furniture, more of a functioning tool. And then, so does that affect if we could see it as art or not? So these are some pretty broad, open-ended questions about the functionality of art, especially in furniture. And I just want to end on this quick note, basically how we got here. There is this one chair in a small house, and I said to him, that's a beautiful chair. And at Christmas, 
he sent me the chair for a Christmas present. This is from Robert Wilson's interview with the New York Times talking about how he got started with his essential obsession about chairs. I find it fascinating that a small little moment such as receiving a chair for Christmas could lead to an artistic moment that leads to conversation and dialogue. So thank you so much and hopefully we could have some interesting conversations.